This time out, we're going to add a newsletter sign up block to this section, which is a blank section I've already added into Squarespace. If you haven't already added a new section for it yet, or you don't want to put it into an existing section like this one here, then you can just click on this add section option here and you've got a load of templates that you can choose. But in this case, we're going to go with the blank section and I'm going to go to the top left-hand corner and click on add block. Once I've done that, we can scroll through these options and we can see the newsletter sign up option here on the right-hand side. If I click on that once, it now puts a new newsletter sign up feature in place. And the one thing we can notice is we can drag, move and resize this block so we can put it amongst other content. Let's say we wanted to put it into an existing section with content in here already. So this one could be a different one as well. So I'm going to remove this previous audio clip that I added as a previous tutorial, and we're going to add one into this section. And notice the difference between the two options. By adding it in here, it's automatically switched to dark mode, meaning that the colors have changed automatically. So let's look about the styling options we can add for our newsletter signup form. First of all, I'd strongly recommend changing the form name to something specific to this page or this content type. Ideally, the mailing list that you're looking for users to subscribe to. Then the title will directly adjust the title on the page. And as you may have guessed it, the description will update this section here. Nice and straightforward so far. There's also the disclaimer option. And even if you're not based in the EU to conform to GDPR compliance, I strongly recommend that you add something in this section as well. But if you are looking for a more compact layout, I think it's pretty clear that this is very much an opt-in field. We've also got the option here to add a name field as well. Because of the width of this block, it's reorientated it. So again, you may not like that new format. There's a few things that we can do, namely increase the width of this by clicking on this bounding box and dragging it to the right. Another useful feature, post submit. The default is just a thank you. And this is for all inquiry forms within Squarespace. So I'd recommend going with something a little bit more detailed. There's also the option to put some additional custom code, enabling you to bring in third-party images or page structures into this pop-up message that replaces this form. And I'll show you an example in a moment in terms of what will appear. Alternatively, we can redirect the thank you page to a URL, which could be a file. If you were giving away a free lead magnet for every sign up, you can choose a file here or a page within the site, or you can enter in a third party URL to link them to a separate website. Again, make sure that the user flow is nice and easy and not at all confusing when doing that. If we switch onto the design settings, we've got the option to stack or float. There's no difference here. That's again, because of the width of this bounding box. When we have a wider frame, we can see that the float option will float them all landscape if you allow the space for it. Alternatively, the stack option will stack them in a vertical format. We can align it to the left. In this format here, a left alignment option works probably the best. I'll change that bounding box so it sits below the introduction and this form on the right. Just judging this, having two forms on the same page is probably overkill and it would be too confusing. We need one clear call to action, but we're just demoing it at this stage. Also, we've got the option to add a stroke. So again, check out the tutorial I've created for contact forms. And I went into more detail in showing how to style that. But the outline option and the option to put a background color are two relatively new, but welcome features to Squarespace. We can also put rounded corners around our subscription form as well. Also padding options, blend mode. If you're overlaying this over top of an image, you've got a number of different overlay filters that you can get. And if you come across from Photoshop, you would know all about what I'm talking about there. And another really nice effect, and I've been able to play around with this to create some really nice finishes, is the option to add a blur. If you're adding an inquiry form over top of quite a detailed photo, it will blur the background behind this container, which can work really nicely. Again, relatively new feature that's nice to work with. So let's just go to this option here. And we're going to put the required name field in just to demo how that looks when we have all of those fields in place. Final option here is storage. So Squarespace has Squarespace email campaigns. It's built in marketing tool, and you can automatically add subscription signups 
to one of those databases. So for example, add to mailing list, you need to go in and set up your email campaigns mailing list first, and then this form will automatically drop the contact into there. We've got the option to send confirmation email if you want to apply additional verification, making sure you're not picking up any spam. And another anti-spam measure is the Google recapture. There is very few instances where I'd recommend removing that feature. And if we look at other storage options, we can link it up to Zapier, or we could link it to Google Drive, namely Google Sheets. So every time someone subscribes, it adds it in as a new item in a Google Sheet row. Meaning that if we don't use Zapier, if we use something like, for example, Task Magic, which I use, as soon as that row has been added in Google Spreadsheets, we can go and drop that contact into our CRM or other platform. So a lot of power here, a lot of features available with the subscription option. If you don't have a huge amount of traffic to your site, you might find that you don't have a huge uptake for this feature, but it can certainly build with your website over time. Finally, I just want to show you what the post submit button looks like. If we exit the edit mode and go into the preview mode by clicking on this arrow in the top right hand corner, submit it there and we can see now that we've got our thank you message. So that's something I'd recommend looking at post submit option just to put something a bit more personalized in, but we can see it only affects this section, the container where your email signup is. Hope you found this helpful. We do have a free community over at school with a K and I've left some information in the description where we cover everything website builders and go into a lot more detail in providing you tutorials and give you the option to ask us questions for all of the headaches and problems that you're having getting used to website builders. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.